In this video, we're going to solve the Poisson equation, which is the prototype for elliptic partial differential equations. In the setup of a membrane that is fixed on all lines and a forcing is applied such that it deforms, the solution will only take us 50 lines of code in Phoenix, and then we can execute the file and get a control plot of the deformation at each point. Let's get started. Welcome to this new Python coding tutorial using the Phoenix finite element software. As said in the intro, the Poisson equation here in two dimensions is the prototype for an elliptic partial differential equation. It is given as the negative of the Laplace operator applied to the unknown function u is equal to a right hand side f. This equation can be found in many applications in physics. Here we want to look at arguably one of the simplest examples which is the deformation of a membrane. And this membrane, for instance, you can think of it as a trampoline that you fix on all ends. Here we will have it as a unit square domain for the sake of simplicity. And then we will apply a forcing and we'll also use the simplest forcing possible, which is going to be constant over all the domain by just being one unit and pointing downwards. And of course, if we fix our membrane, that means we have homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition because U refers to the displacement of our domain or how much it deforms under the load. And if it does not deform on the boundary, then of course we have a Dirichlet boundary condition. And since it's zero, it is a homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition. And under this load, the membrane deforms and the expected outcome you've already seen in the intro is something that is radially symmetric around the center. We will have the largest deformation in the center and then it will slowly decrease and approach the zero deformation on the boundary, which is also prescribed by the boundary conditions. In order to solve a partial differential equation using the Phoenix finite element framework, we need it to be in the weak formulation and the weak form of our Poisson equation with pure Dirichlet boundary conditions is given here that we have the inner product of the gradient of a trial function on u with the gradient on a test function v is the right hand side given as the inner product of f and the test function v where f is our right hand side forcing. This inner product refers to an integration over the domain but we can conveniently describe that with Phoenix. If that sounds a little bit strange, I will have a video linked up here where I also derive the weak form of the Laplace operator. So this weak form that you see here for the Laplace operator, or more precisely the negative Laplace operator, is always the same. So that's a typical form you find in these PDE problems. Okay, with the theory out of the way, let's start with the implementation. Let's go down and first import Phoenix as FE. And then we also need matplotlib.pyplotsplt. And then let's define two constants. First, I want to define endpoints per axis, which is going to define the discretization points per axis. Here I want to have 12. And then I will also define the forcing magnitude. And for the start, I just want to have it as one. Then let's define a main function, leave it empty. Then let's get our name switch. So if name is equal to main, then execute the main function. And then we are sure this file is only executed with the Python interpreter. And then within the main function, first step is to set up the mesh and the finite element discretization. So the mesh is going to be super simple. For this, we will use phoenix.unit square mesh because our domain will be one unit by one unit. So we only have to provide how many discretization points we want per axis. And I want to have this equally discretized in both x0 and x1 axis. Then we can use the mesh in order to define a function space. This is something that you will find in any finite element problem that you're going to solve. Here we will just use the super simple option, which is a Lagrange space and also doing it linearly, a first order Lagrange space. For this, I want to call this Lagrange polynomial space first order to be really verbose and then say phoenix.function space and then this takes three arguments first a mesh 
then we need to define what kind of function space we want and we want Lagrange and then we also have to define the order and this one is one and if you look at some Phoenix tutorials you also see sometimes that they use CG here which stands for continuous Galerkin um, they refer to the same function spaces but I like to have it more verbose being Lagrange here then we have to define our boundary conditions so this is the next point boundary condition or conditions and as said we will have a homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition and this one can be defined by saying phoenix dot Dirichlet boundary condition and then this one takes a function space which is the Lagrange space which is defined and then we need to define the value we want to have on a boundary and since it is a homogeneous Dirichlet it means it is zero so we will say phoenix.constant0. And then we need a third argument, which is some sort of a Boolean function. That's a little bit abstract, but let's first write that down. So we will, before the definition of the Dirichlet boundary condition, we're going to define another function. I want to call boundary Boolean function. And this one shall have the signature, it takes a position X as well as an on boundary flag. And here we just want to return on boundary. The reason we have to implement that is because theoretically we could have different boundary conditions depending on the edge or if you have more complicated meshes um, then also with more complicated conditions. And Phoenix is providing this function which we have to implement manually with an on boundary boolean which it says so we are on the boundary together with this position what type of boundary is it but for our case since we only have one type of boundary we will just return the boolean in order to indicate to phoenix if you are on the boundary that's the only type of boundary we have which is an homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition. Then we can use this function as another argument to the Dirichlet boundary condition constructor. So we will put in boundary boolean function. That's the boundary conditions. Next up is to implement the weak form. But before we can do that, we first have to use our function space in order to define trial and test functions. So this one will be the next point, trial and test functions. And we will have a U trial function, which we're going to use in order to define the weak form. In that sense, a trial function is the concept that Phoenix uses in order to, yes, define the weak forms. So we will say U trials equal to Phoenix dot trial function on our Lagrange polynomial space. And then we will have a V test function phoenix dot test function on the Lagrange space. And then we can define the weak form. And for this, I first want to bring down the forcing. So forcing and here, this will just be a phoenix constant on the forcing magnitude. But now we have to be careful. If we look at our setup again, we know that the forcing is pointing downwards. So if we were to set up a coordinate system and this perpendicular axis was pointing upwards, we would actually have a negative forcing. But even if we had a positive forcing, our membrane would just deform upwards. So in the end, it's just to make it a little bit more physical if someone is like standing on a trampoline. So we will have negative forcing magnitude. And then we have our weak form. And I want to define the weak form in a left-hand side and a right-hand side. Usually a left-hand side in a weak form refers to all components which contain U and the right-hand side refers to all components that does not have a U or in other words, which don't have the trial function in it. So for the left-hand side, so the weak form left-hand side is going to be Phoenix dot dot product on the phoenix of gradient on u trial with the phoenix dot gradient on v test and then integrate it over the domain okay let me dissect that for you so the gradient i think that's obvious because we have a scalar valued u trial function a scalar value test function we take the gradient of it and in our two-dimensional problem that results in a 2d vector field the gradient field and then we have to contract this back into scalar value so we use a dot product 
we could also equally use an inner product here which in that particular case does not refer to the functional inner product as we have it here but rather the vector inner product which is a dot product so let's remove that and keep the dot product and then we of course have to integrate over the domain and we highlight that to phoenix by saying multiply with dx so with the differential then we also have a weak form right hand side which is forcing times v test integrated over the domain and you see here we don't need a dot or an inner because it's just a multiplication of two scalar functions which still are scalar whereas if we would have the multiplication of two vector fields it's a little bit arbitrary and we otherwise wouldn't have our contraction into scalar okay that's the weak form last step for phoenix is to assemble and solve so this is the finite element assembly and the linear system solve and that's rather straightforward first of all we have to create a container for our solution so this is basically the field in which phoenix saves the nodal displacements or the nodal deformations of our mesh that is representing the membrane and i want to call this u solution and this is a phoenix function and here you see that's no longer a trial or test function that's not something that is used to define a weak form but that is an actual field that we want to solve for and here we again have to provide our function space and then we can solve our problem by saying phoenix.solve and this first needs us to provide the weak form and here in that case since we have it separated in left hand side and right hand side we can just say weak form left hand side equals weak form right hand side and phoenix has this equality operator overloaded such that it represents an equation and the reason we did it with the left hand side and the right hand side is because we have a linear partial differential equation and this is easier to solve because then phoenix can just resort to a linear system solver instead of having treated potentially non-linear then we wanted to be saved in the u solution field and we wanted to respect the homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition last step for us would be to visualize the result so i would just say here visualize and for this i want to do a plot and say phoenix dot plot on u solution that's quite convenient because that there's a phoenix routine which does all the magic in the background with setting up matplotlib and i also want to plot the mesh on top so that we can take a look at that as well and in order to make our solution a little bit more clear i want to set the mode to be color and then i want to activate a color bar as well for this i have to save the plot of our u solution as a variable let's say for instance c and then use the matplotlib command plt to activate a color bar on this particular plot and then lastly i just have to call plt.show in order to bring up a window with our plot okay if we haven't done any mistakes then we should be able to execute that one here so poisson equation dirichlet boundary conditions let's run it and see okay here we go first try amazing that it worked and as you've seen in the intro we have our solution plotted here in a color scale and yellow refers to zero whereas this yeah, dark color purple blue refers to minus 0.07 so that's a negative value and so as expected this uniform forcing all of our domain results in the strongest displacement in the center and then it's almost radially symmetric and we also see our mesh here and phoenix decided to use a triangular mesh which is quite common in finite elements here so we don't see um, cells or square cells but we'd rather see like triangles but all potential difficulties that are associated with that uh, phoenix handles them for us and feel free to play around with it so you can for instance change the forcing or maybe you want to have a non-homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition feel free to play around with it you can download the source code from the video description a big thanks to all the patreons of the channel if you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics you find the link to the patreon page down in the video description
If you enjoyed this video, then please give a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There are more Phoenix tutorials on the channel and also more are about to come. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.